This is Rico Dix. Welcome, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, to the Billiard Network, presenting you all the best in world-class pool action. Wow, what a break here in the first game of this last 16 tie between Eilul Kibarolu and Kristina Zlateva from Bulgaria. Eilul Kibarolu from Turkey and they're trying to get into the quarterfinals at the European Tembal Championships 2022 being played in Lasko, Slovenia. Well, with that perfect cue ball break by Christina, but no results, I a little quick to the table. Uh, I is a pretty good flow player. I think I remember her seeing her for the first time when she actually captured the European nine ball title. And that was quite a few years ago, I have to say, because I haven't played any of these European championships for well, at least 10 years. So we are playing, or the ladies are playing, a race to six to get to the quarterfinals. And she's left a pretty natural line to come in between the black eight and the blue ten ball to pick up the pink four. Bit of work to do because that orange five doesn't go into the right side pocket. So this straight in position. I don't think it's going to do much because I don't even know if it passes the 8. It might theoretically, but it looks from here, from our position, that that orange 5 may have a part of the pocket, but maybe not everything. So, a little bit, well, even though she's straight in, you could say she's a little bit out of line here, so needs to correct herself. Good little stun shot. And if it were just a 5 to be potted it would be great but she's got the wrong angle any kind of screw back to the green six is gonna lead her towards the bottom left corner pocket I don't think she can you would love to play the, the green six into the bottom left but I don't think she can stun draw it over to the left rail and then also come back down to the bottom rail let's see what she comes up with first things first pot the five that's nice. Of course, you could see it was a touchy shot with the cue ball. The cue ball had to avoid going into the bottom left corner pocket. But she's got a cut here. Problem being, she would love to be a little bit straighter because she's already kind of after potting the six. She would have had position on the seven in some kind of capacity. But her making the six, she, I don't think she'll be able to slow the cue ball down. Six needs a certain speed to reach the pocket and that will leave the cue ball going a little bit wild straight towards the blue 10 I think Wow lovely shot that was good direction on the cue ball good feeling of pace and that's pretty good she looks to be in pretty good touch here in the first rack all right, so she could leave the cue ball there, which I think she will do. She could draw it back. Nice. Good. Good shot here on the seven ball. Leaves her with a nice eight ball. Looks pretty good. She looks in good stroke. Already has a good rhythm around the table. Oh, well, well <laughs> there we went. She wasn't that quick. But that was game one. And Eilul is breaking in game two. Trying to uh, get a 2-0 lead here. Ooh, too much topspin. Half ball hit on the one ball. Made the cue ball go down table. All right. No clusters to speak of. All balls kind of go into their natural logical pockets. Maybe the orange five doesn't pass the yellow nine, so that could be something, a point of interest. So Christina really wanting to uh, take this game to not go 2 0 behind, because she's already kind of lost her serve, uh, speaking in tennis terms, or lost her break. So she would like to uh, retaliate and take 
Idol's break game from her after that scratch. All right, good angle on the two. Should lead the cue ball if she rolls it forward to the middle diamond of the bottom short rail. But I think she might even just stun it a little bit to the right, which should drift the cue ball over for a position to shoot the red three in the side or the corner pocket. But then she has to go and deal with that orange five. If it just goes past the nine, that shouldn't be any problem. If it doesn't, or if she doesn't fancy playing it there, it needs a little bit of a more specific position. All right, straight into the corner pocket would mean that she could draw it straight back. She's pointing now and then come off the rail a little bit to shoot the orange five in the left side pocket. Oh, a bit of a shaky table there. This is not your vision, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how much you've been drinking while watching this match. This, uh, <laughs> this camera is being swung a little bit. Maybe somebody's walking in the stands where the camera's hanging. I hope this doesn't continue. This is gonna screw with my equilibrium. All right, good position. So this being kind of like the key shot, the most difficult pot she hopes to face, even though it's straight in, but these side pockets from this angle, not too big, I can tell you. So good shot required. Nice. Really like the way both ladies have been playing, stroking. Speed of cue balls, speed of stroke, this looked really good. So this either offers a one rail natural position for the brown seven in the left side or two rails and out to play the seven in the same pocket. She's shooting the six in now. Oh, not too hard, careful now. Right, she had quite a bit of room to play with. So all okay to make this seven will automatically give her kind of a straight in shot on the black eight but she would like to keep about a 25 degree angle to after she makes the black ball that's looking ahead of things and that you have to be careful with that of course so trying to not land straight on this black ball after she makes the seven but leave a tiny bit of an angle to work with Right, and that is a little bit of a distance, to be honest. A um, bit of a distance, not too big of an angle, so she would really have to kind of force screw this cue ball back. I mean, never mind coming off of the rail, she would like to either... I think she's looking at drawing it back like 20 centimeters or something to leave herself a cut on the yellow nine. Right about there. So she's just checking from where the least she has to draw it back to and of course no further than just before she snickers herself on the blue 10 ball. Yeah, focus, visualizing. This needs uh, her best stroke of the game so far. And that is a pretty nifty execution I have to say. Now. Making this yellow nine is going to lead her cue ball to come off of the left long rail and go pretty much directly towards the blue 10. She won't be able to hold it because of the angle she's faced with on to make the nine. So I think she has to make this yellow nine and then come either left or right side past the blue 10 to shoot it maybe in the side pocket to where she's pointing now. So either a little bit of left spin, which makes the pot more difficult, or a bit of right spin. So both require a little bit of talent here. Wow, that's a pretty shot. Two rails and out. Nice, good strokes, good, good speed on the cue ball, like not, not really rolling the making trying to make that nine ball really softly or something which can create a bad contact so just aim this well stroke it nicely through the white to tie up this game beautiful beautiful all right 
We're going to game three with Christina breaking. They're racking the balls for themselves and she's looking to make the blue two or the green six that's below the yellow one into either of the side pockets. Look at those two balls. There goes the green six, as promised. That's a good break again. Not as good as her first one, but definitely made a, one of the balls she was kind of going for or everyone is going for when you're breaking a 10 ball rack. The two balls below the center or below the first ball in the rack, the highest ball. Same thing you would do playing eight ball, besides trying to make wild balls. All right, so she's pretty straight, has to come play the blue two after this. Problems is it in this rack or anything to pay attention to is the pink four. Coming up two shots later, three shots later. All right. Extended her cue with a nifty little extension there. Taking that off now. Right, making this blue ball would automatically make her cue ball roll into the nine ball. And I don't think you want to be risking that. Although if she would stop her cue ball right where the yellow nine is now, that would give her a shot on the red three towards the left side. But any kind of half ball hit would uh, jeopardize that. What she could do is either play it with quite a bit of left spin to guide it past the left of the nine or a bit of right spin to avoid the nine, but that would make her come towards the red three. Yeah, yeah. I think she's looking to run into the nine, really. I mean, it, it would be the most straightforward thing to do. No spin required or almost no spin, maybe half a tip of left. But can go wrong. Let's see, hit it a bit too low. All right. Tester. And I would think oh, she's looking to maybe play the pink four brown seven combination. I mean that's uh, that'd be a daring thing to do. Reason she might be looking at it is if she makes the red three in the left side pocket, the cue ball's kind of gonna run towards the pink four itself or the 10 ball and that really doesn't give her any position unless she kisses the 10 ball nicely or kisses the pink four in a certain way so she's gonna shoot it in the pocket nearest us all right nice pot but uh, I mean, this is a very testing shot for any player in the world especially a match like this trying to get into quarterfinal places and with that a chance to get yourself into a medal position at a European pool championships I mean it's uh, what many of these European top players are gunning for once a year during 10 days of European championships tournaments all right here we go extreme accurate aiming required oh she was playing safe oh that's uh, I didn't see that coming Maybe I should have. Good though, not not too greedy. Of course, you're giving the opponent a chance at the table. She might hit this and get away with it, or even snooker Christina. Careful not to touch that orange five now. Where's the referee? I'm the referee. No. Ooh, pretty good hit. Because she hit it so hard, the cue ball reacted pretty wide off that pink four. Well. This is what Christina played for, so now this rack is open. Get straight in into the orange. We'll automatically give you position on brown seven. Would automatically leave you the perfect angle on the black eight to go to the yellow nine. All right, don't give yourself too much angle now. Yes, she did. All right, so could roll this in, but I doubt she will be able to leave herself straight onto the brown seven then. Unless she really kind of drags her cue ball with bottom left spin, which makes the orange a lot more difficult. All right, just resetting herself. Pretty good going if you're not seeing clearly after you've been aiming for a while and think you should be shooting the ball by now. Just get up and 
if you think you're not seeing it clearly you're the only one that matters so reset and go again that's a beautiful corrective shot she's got position on the brown seven right a bit of an angle but she should be able to or she's gonna looking at screwing the cue ball back I'm not sure okay. So she wants to play the eight in the same pocket. Wants to leave about a 40 degree angle. Ooh. I mean, nice. flirting with the corner pocket. She did leave herself a nice angle to play with though. I think she might have to stun it straight to the left from where she's looking. Yeah, she could roll the eight ball in, but then she needs a lot of left spin to come off of that right rail to spin it towards the nine. If she hits it a tip below center, center ball stun like so. I think that's a better route. Good shot. All right, not too much angle to play with here. So another stun of some kind required, either the same shot she just played, making the cue ball go to the top short rail and back towards the nine or hitting it super top spinning it with left spin and coming out of the corner she's potting the nine ball in mm -hmm. zoop here we go well, a nice stroke she's been showing some good technical aspects to her game good rhythm good professional getting up if she didn't see it clearly so this 10 ball to make it go back on serve for a 2-1 lead swallowed it wow that must have uh, made her heart skip a beat there all right Eilul Kibarolu to break the balls trying to even this match 2-2 again trying to make the brown seven in the right side or the nine ball in the left side now she's hitting has hit both breaks with way too much topspin and often if you're hitting your cue ball with too much of a top spin, you're not transferring a lot of energy or speed into the rack, and as you could see, that rack didn't explode the way it has done the last two times for Christina. Right, as she plots her way to these first four balls, let me tell you what the path was before these two ladies clashed here. They both played three matches to get into this single elimination last 16 stage miss kibarolu in her first winners round played main Nguyen from sweden and beat her six games to four christina beat christine feldman from switzerland 6-3 and that brought them into the winners qualification meaning they're one game away from the single elimination last 32 stage Ailul in that match to qualify for the best 32 remaining women in European 10 ball beat Maria Teresa Ropero six games to one so nice and convincing there and Christina had a good win against a former European pool champion Veronica Hubertova from the Czech Republic that brought him into the best 32 players and then they both won one game to set up this tie Eilul beat Olivia Zalewska from Poland. Very good player. Six games to three. And Christina, a very excellent win, or it looks like it anyway, against Bojana Sarac from Serbia. And she beat her six games to zero. And so these two women meet here. Both looking at the results. I mean, I didn't see the previous matches, but looking at the results look like being in stroke none of them really came through hill hill matches i mean that might sometimes not necessarily get you in stroke but it would make you kind of battle hardened and uh, and that can sometimes help you all right moving back to the game at hand bit of a no hardly any angle on the pink four She's just deliberating what to do here. She could top spin it 
with right spin and come off the rail she could do the same thing with bottom right or bottom and just draw it back she wants to try to get a cue ball over somewhere near the yellow nine but that is not easy i think a follow through might be easier since you're able to hit the ball a little bit softer making the pocket less small than the harder you hit a ball into a pocket of course the more vicious the jaws can be when you don't hit it that cleanly so let's see what she's decided to do sure maybe sure but just aware of the accuracy required and of course would have loved to have been in an easier spot than this so hitting your cue ball below the equator means you screw back wow. this girl's got technique nice and really it's kind of visible, I, you know, everybody, or most pool players, most players really, they like seeing left-handed players because it seems like they stroke the cue ball nicely. They seem to have a knack of having a good touch on the white ball. And that was a nice fluent stroke, no poking there. All right, so natural roll of the orange in, come back to where the cue ball is about now. Should be alright, because the seven goes in both bottom corner pockets. So she would love to be straight or a little bit to the left of straight for the brown in the bottom right corner pocket. So she doesn't have to maneuver her cue ball too much after playing the seven. Beautiful shot. Nice little bit of left spin remaining on that cue ball when it, when it reached the left rail. Meaning it spun that much towards the brown seven and also had a bit of speed left to come nice and close to it. I think she's going to stop her cue ball, just stun it half a ball to the right and leave herself an angle on the black. Oh, didn't need that much screw back. Too much technique, too fluent she is. Right here, I don't think she needs any bottom spin, but she would like to come back somewhere just south of the middle of the table. So a bit of left spin. Alright, one test remaining. Hopefully, hopefully she can make this one and leave herself a beautiful 10 ball. Pretty natural top spin shot required. Maybe a tip of left. Cue ball should go straight towards the master sign that you see further down on the sponsor signs. And then come to where her head is now. Nice, use the second rail. That's it. It's been a good match so far by Christina. So has it been by Ailu, but uh, she hasn't been at the table that much. For a 3 1 lead. Boom. Takes her chance and is taking no prisoners. Alright, rack number five. Christina to break. Now she's been hitting the cue ball nice. And enough with enough stun drawback. Again, good shot. Look at that nine ball go. That's the one she. Went for, but no shot on the yellow one. Well, she's got a shot, but no pot. What to do, what to do here? We haven't really seen any safeties, have we? we haven't seen a push out. Have we seen any? Boy, one safety by Christina from which she got a ball in the hands the situations and that was good well safety here then cutting the lemon yellow as good as she can where it is now 
Ooh, hello. It's like a, almost like a triple ball snooker. I thought she wasn't going to get the snooker, but she definitely got one. I don't. I mean, it very much looks like a snooker. It's hard for us to see it here, looking from this view. Well, just left of the green six, hit the one and with a bit of top spin coming off that bottom rail. Will then hopefully make the cue ball stop where the one ball is now. And she's calling it in the left side. So, 10 ball call shot game, no flukes allowed. with either too much left spin or anyway right left the pocket although a small one for Christina blue two does go into the right side pocket if she kind of holds position somewhere where the orange five is now which seems like the natural thing to do because going anywhere else would require forced cue ball speed making that little pocket she's attempting this what yellow one in even smaller and you'd rather be rolling it then she could still hit the left part of the pocket or of the rail and make that one ball drop so it seems like a natural follow through if she gets position now then she's in perfect line for the rest of the rack Judging by the way she's been playing so far, you have to say that she should be able to squeeze this one ball into that small pocket and find the tempo that her cue ball requires to just hit, probably just hit the bottom rail and come out one or two balls widths. Alright, so Christina really would love to clinch this rack now that she has a chance to go 4 1 ahead, and leaving. I little back into the game to try to come back to 2-3. All right, opted to play safe. All right, never wanted to hit the black eight, and so left Miss Kibarolu a shot on the yellow one. Now, cue ball naturally goes straight into the bottom rail, will come straight back out towards the blue 10. I don't think she'll... Well, she could try to stop her cue ball on the blue 10. She could play it with a bit of right spin. Left spin from where we're looking, but right spin for her. Try to bend it just to the left of that blue 10 and come back to the left center of table. Her shot on the blue 2 in the right bottom corner pocket. Okay bit of a stretch so as you can see adding the extension to her cue it's become very popular and very normal for pool players in the last five to ten years or so All right, I think she's playing safe stopping the cue ball and that um, looks like a pretty good shot or did she leave Christina the edge of the one don't think so. She's just looking where she can hit the cue ball into the top rail. Also calling it in the left side, as you could briefly see. In the fast forward. Ooh, good hit. Good, very good hit. Good speed. And that's the result. She could have hit it like half half a centimeter to the left or right that yellow ball and she would have still got this kind of result so that was a good hit good speed so a accurate two rail kick required probably two rail kick trying to make the cue ball stop where the yellow is now and kind of doing the same to Christina but this the difficulty level of this shot is a little bit heftier all right, she's also calling it in the left side pocket. I think she's trying to come off two rails. Oh, good hit. Look at this. Wow. 
excellent shot. It's a beautiful pl played game so far. A beautiful played match. I mean, I think she's she may have left her a theoretical jump shot, but that needs some. That needs that cue ball to go at least a ball's width off of the slate, quick time fashion. She might call the pink four in the right corner pocket. Right, well, let's see. At least you want to, of course, not hit the ball you're trying to jump over. And try to hit the cue ball in the center as well so it doesn't spin, maybe hitting the red three on its way towards the yellow. She's a bit unsure. She's able to uh, find the height on the cue ball before it hits that orange five. So here we go. Quick cue action, making the cue ball thump into the slate and out. Ooh, yeah, just hit the five. Tough shot and a great kick by Elo in the shot preceding that. Beautiful way to get yourself a ball in the hand chance. Deserved. Right. So no clusters. Just good pattern play here to uh, give yourself nice angles or minimal angles. Fairly easy pots. Maneuverable cue balls. So that you don't have to show in your incredible talents is uh, how, how I would teach my students. So it is pretty straight here, which would give her a shot on the red three. But if she leaves her cue ball, therefore in the same line as the blue is now, then she will have to stun the red three in, having to shoot harder. So she would love to get a bit straighter on the three than she is now. I think she'll be able to. Good stroke as well. I think I'm really, really enjoying the way both ladies are approaching the shots, the speed at which they play. Don't mess about, especially Elo is a nice rhythm player, as you can see, even though she's three run down. Doesn't phase her. Now, as I said, she didn't have the ultimate angle on the on the blue, so she didn't have the great angle on the red three, leaving her now having to shoot this orange like so which requires a lot of bottom right more distance than she wanted and a certain tempo requirement to bring the cue ball threaded back towards the line where it is now all right here we go good pot slow down now cue ball beautiful execution very good shot now back in line the way she wanted to be i think she will Come forward two rails, top left spin, trying to leave herself either straight on the brown seven or a little bit below straight from where we're looking. And did just that. Now hitting the cue ball into the seven, she already would already give her a shot into the black eight in the top right corner. She could draw it back to shoot the eight in its logical right side pocket. But didn't mess about. Right. These two balls to narrow the gap to two games to three. Important moment in this match, but she's right in line, so should should be able to uh, pounce here on that jump shot error from Christina. And then it's a little break as well, so all to play for. <gasps> oh. Wow. Didn't expect that now, did we? Such a good rack. Such a good chance for created and here we go. Christina with this Lovely 10 ball to get a 4-1 lead. She wouldn't have ever expected this chance, but here it is, and she will take it. All right. 4-1 for Christina from Bulgaria against Eilul from Turkey. 
Miss Kibaolu to break. See if she can hit the cue ball a li little bit lower to make the red three and the orange balls in the side pockets. There goes the orange. Nice. Wow, made two balls on the break this time. All right. What do we have here? She has a bank shot. To bank the one ball, double the one ball into the pocket where she was just standing. I don't think the red three, which is next, forms a combination with the pink four. So she might have to carom that. So she will have to leave the cue ball in the left bottom half of the table. First things first, bank this. All right, a little bit of a distraction, I think, by the lady from Portugal coming into your screen here. Who maybe should have given Ailu the right of way and let her shoot first, but hey, there you go. These things happen whether you're in a pool hall or in a European Championships. Not if you're on a matchroom TV one table situation, but uh, you just have to regain focus and get back to the task at hand. Beautiful shot. Left herself the carom onto the pink four, but where's that red three gonna go? She needs that red three, doesn't really matter. Straight would be great, because the green six is, is next, two shots later, so nothing to worry there. All right. You could say that was a very hard hit and kind of almost leaving it up to chance, but she must have had an idea of where that three ball was gonna go. Well. <clears throat> she did leave herself a straight in shot. I think the brown seven goes. Um, so, good pot required here because that right side pocket is mighty small coming in from this angle. Hit the point and also hit it a bit harder. Yeah, she's showing a little bit of a technically on that 10 ball, a bit of move body movement that she missed. This ball, which only required the pot, hitting it a bit harder. And that would that would kind of show that you let the nerves get to you and the deficit she's currently facing. So Christina with a chance to go 5-1 up in a race to six. I mean, that would be nigh on insurmountable. But as we've seen uh, bigger comebacks in pool. I think she's chosen to bank it. She pointed towards the pocket nearest to us. Because I don't think she wants to play the red three off of the top rail into the six, into the pocket. I think that's the shot though, even though the six is more than a ball off of that top rail. I don't think she's changed her call. Alright, answers on a postcard. What do you think she's... Well, answers in the comments below. What do you think she's going to do? Alright, if you're enjoying this match by uh, the Billiard Network, your place to go for world-class pool action then uh, we'd really appreciate it if you could also show your support and you can do that by pressing the like button. You can also show your support and your appreciation by pressing the subscribe button, which will mean that new Billiard ner Network videos and old great videos will come up into your recommendations when you go to YouTube. All right, called the six. Nice shot. Now, this is a toughie. She can, I think she, I think she can make the red three in the top right corner pocket. I think she can also avoid scratching. To be honest, I think she'd be hitting just to the left of the right side pocket. Although she thinks she's going to go past it. But then to land basically straight in to shoot the brown seven in the bottom right corner pocket to get into that position is a very difficult thing to do and going around the table so coming two or three rails doesn't seem 
like a viable option either. Hmm, conundrum for Christina. Yeah, I would say she can roll it in, not scratch. Of course, you can only really see it if you're standing behind your shot, if it's that close to scratching or not. Even which side of the pocket you make it in will also change the reaction direction of your cue ball. Alright, let's see what she comes up with. Needs a correctional shot here to get back in line. that bank she called the play she called the safe well either way I don't think a little who's allowed well, if she called the bank then she has to play it if she didn't call the bank then a little is has the choice to let Christina back in and being snookered I think she would although you might not want to give this back if you're faced with it <gasps> yeah that was a close call well Leaving a little with a difficult pot on the brown seven. And she can't really do anything with her cue ball then. Bring it back to the center of the table for a shot at the black. I don't think she'll be able to get straight in on the black. But center table shot would make her happy enough. Well, making the brown seven would make her happy. First of all, so. Hit your cue ball in center line high ball in this case because it's hard to hit it in the center but middle of the line so it doesn't deflect aim well stand still beauty of a pot wow impressive after those two misses of the last two games or if this beginning of this game and the 10 ball she missed to come up with that brown seven is is a good shot all right still work required because that angle she has on the black eight she won't be able to make it in hold position for the nine ball in the bottom left corner if she follows it through she might be able to miss the ten ball but then needs a lot of right spin i don't know she could screw it past the nine into the left long rail and back out and it needs a lot of speed let's see what she comes up with If she would have hit it with a little bit more screw back, she would have definitely also gotten even more what she planned. But this is great. And this works just as well. And she'll be happy with those two last shots, the seven and the eight. All right. To make it two games to four. Here we go. Game seven coming up. Christina to break. too much topspin and you will often see they're trying to make the two balls below the one ball in the, in the left and right side pocket but if you're hitting the cue ball with too much topspin or even tip above center or a lot of topspin those two balls below the one they don't get drawn towards the side pockets you will see and in eight ball and in ten ball it's sometimes even better to hit your cue ball with too much or with a bit more draw much rather than topspin, and those two balls would then still get sucked towards the side pocket. Right, so no balls down. A little back to the table, an elevated cue. Let's screw cue ball back a little bit at least. Needs to make this one ball first. Nice. Good shot. Not the ultimate angle to get all the way back to the left side of the table. She would basically like to come straight in on the red three, but she could stun her cue ball straight into the right long rail, but after that it's going to hit the blue ten or yellow nine. I don't think she'll be able to thread it through there. I mean, going forward two rails with top right spin, I mean, uh, 
pink four and five are big balls to have to avoid. So what do you do here? You don't want to screw it back three rails, do you? Important moment here. Again, doesn't want to go five two down and leaving Christina with only one game to win. 4-3 would put the heat back on Christina and give Eilul a little bit of a flow. Wow, good shot. Good stun draw. And of course, she hit the, the 8, which she didn't plan to do, but she hit it in the realm of good directions, let's say. Now, very straight on the 3, so... She won't be able to maneuver her cue ball anywhere else but straight forward, straight back. But leaving it where she's pointing now will give her a, a doable pot in the pink four. And she won't have to do anything with her cue ball because the orange five will be there to play natural position on. So follow your cue ball through just past the side pocket. Always hit your tip position nice and, if you want it to follow through, hit it nice and high. Don't hit it just above center, because you're kind of instructing your cue ball to, to not roll that well forward. And if you hit it nice and high, you give it clear instructions. Your cue ball really does what you want it to do. So this, all natural so far. Six goes in, in most pockets after the orange five, so any kind of angle on the five or even straight in would give her options. This the first test. Nice, okay, even hit the six into an even better position. And now this is all very nicely laid out. She could bring the cue ball for position on the six back to where it is now. That would leave a, a lovely angle. She could also stun it towards the blue ten. But you don't want to get behind the blue ten. So I think I would bring it back to where it is now, really. Into the area where there are no balls, even though it's traveling a little bit. It's a pretty natural topspin. All right, all right, all right. Don't think she played to play it in the corner, but keep your cool if that's what you're left with, because it's an excellent position here to clear up these five balls and get it back to three, four. And what a difference between possibly going five, one down in a race to six or this. So focus required. And a great line. Alright, in the meantime, I would advise you to visit the Billiard Network library on YouTube and have a look through the classic world-class pool matches we have collected there for you to, for your enjoyment. We have a lot of videos with the the legendary Earl the Pearl Strickland commentating and um, I mean he's just a uh, well of wisdom besides a well of charisma as a player but also as a commentator and you'd really learn a lot from going to those videos and having a little look there we're looking forward to bringing you even more contact contact <laughs> content like the one like what you're watching now and um, more european championships 2022 matches okay i will hit the cue a little bit lower than you have been Boom, see that's better. Cue ball drawn back makes the brown go to the side pocket. 
much bigger chance she gave herself there. And there she hit it a bit too low. The cue ball came back towards the top rail, which also kind of took energy that she would love to go to the, give to the rack of 10 balls. So those balls didn't really spread out that amazingly. But again, she's faced with a bank shot on the yellow into the side. It's not easy and not straightforward. She could bank the one onto the orange five. Anywhere she would hit the orange five would make the green six. Mm -hmm. That's an option. Safety. There's no safety here, I think. You definitely don't want to push out. We haven't seen a push out either, have we? Right. I think the bank onto the combination there is, is the biggest chance to make a ball. I don't actually know what she called. How she called the safety. Well, I said there wasn't a safety, and how wrong was I? Even though there's no snooker, this is a... Of course she's going to hit the ball, but this is hard to get away with, leaving to be able to bring the cue ball. This side of the table is not easy. It's going to be nigh on impossible. The only chance of a snooker she has is to bring the cue ball back behind that combination. I think she's called safe. She's trying to bank it past the black eight and bring it down table here and the cue ball back towards her. I mean, in the realm of possibilities, that's a great result. Yeah, it's a bit hard to judge how that one ball is probably never going to avoid hitting the black eight. And well, this is a pretty good result because the jump shot is not available. Meaning she could jump the blue two, but would then not be able to keep her cue ball cool enough to hit the one and stay on the table. So a two rail kick required most likely. Coming off the bottom rail nearest us and hitting the one ball. But then it's hard not to kick the one ball towards the, or, uh, towards the pink four or something. It's hard to hit it south of the one ball from where we're looking that would be the right position see it's yeah it's hard to avoid that group but tempo wise i mean she will take that i mean a little tap of the cue on the table meaning that she didn't really intend to do this and a half apology does she really mean it right so she left christina part of the one ball don't know if she left her enough definitely not enough to pot it in the pocket to where she's standing and I don't think she left her enough to try to play that one onto the orange five to make the green six so she could send and there's not much she could do bar sending the one ball up to the top rail and not really more containing buying yourself hopefully another shot safety and that's a dangerous thing to do at this level yeah tough spot Hmm. Yeah, she could swerve it to be able to hit it fuller and then she is now and but then yeah you call the one ball, which does have a big pocket next to that combination there. Or call the combination, but either way it would require it would require a lot of accuracy. Yeah, she's a little bit lost in lost for options here what would you do
right if there are any players that you would love to see us cover matches of let us know in the comments below and uh, we will get on it so a lot of international pool coming up in 2022 and uh, we're going to show you the very best matches now Christina well I mean, that's a result I don't think she left her the pot so what is Miss Kibarolo going to do again I've always found like with the when I played in the Dutch national team we had a drill where we kind of had to play safe we could never pot the ball and even if you had a shot on the one like this you still had to play safe now if your ball is let's say naturally wants to be potted especially if you're straight in it's very hard to to find a decent safety more often than not so also in this instance even if she can hit the one ball half ball only she's gonna call the bank shot I mean that be a result and a half so if if she wouldn't be snookered at all oh she's gonna kick it okay well, if she makes it she might not have position on the blue too all right hit it much more half ball than she wanted to that's a pretty good result so yeah if there are any players female male junior senior players that you would love to see a high class match of then let us know in the comments below and uh, we will bring you that in the near future as I said there are a lot of international tournaments coming up for male and female touring professionals and um, we really look forward to covering these matches and bringing them to you as soon as we can so what's Christina going to do here? What do you think? My lovely audience. I mean, she can... I think. <laughs> you can hear me sighing as like, I wouldn't really want to be faced with this option. I mean, she could play the carom, hit the one ball on the right side, half ball. Play with a lot of bottom right and try to hit that five ball. That would automatically make the... Do it green drop and the one ball might bank two rails back down to where it is now I mean that's an option I mean she could try to hit the one ball on the left side as thin as she can and bring the cue ball back down below the nine but then she would kind of release the one ball towards that right corner pocket and um, that's not easy either now on these outside tables uh, as you may have noticed there's no shot clock in action so players can think for the moment as, as long as they wish there is a referee in the area and uh, in the European Championships there's a rule that uh, I believe it's it, within an hour yeah she tried the first option I sketched there's a rule in the uh, European Championships tournaments that if you haven't finished half of the maximum playable games within an hour I believe um, then the referee will come over to your table with a lovely stopwatch and uh, will enforce the shot clock on you and that changes sometimes the complex complexion of the match completely because some players don't mind it and some players uh, get the bejeebies if the shot clock all of a sudden is a uh, kind of they feel chased all right, bridging over the one, not doing much with the cue ball bar. Letting it cross the table from left to right. Hopefully maybe leaving it in the angle straight in on the blue where she is now, albeit at a further distance. So you really want to roll this with a center line cue ball, not to curve your cue ball. Tough shot, even if it is just the pot required. All right, she hit it pretty hard. I think she could have hit that softer she really hit it with and when I'm faced with those shots I kind of love to roll it not to force the cue ball into some kind of curve right does this one ball pot naturally it's a very thin cut if not then she can bank it finally onto that combination I've been mentioning about 10 times 
it will be played at some point, whether it is after this one ball. Yeah, so she's calling the green six. So she wants to kind of envision banking the one, but missing it a little bit too straight, meaning it will hit the orange. Nice. Good shot. All right. Looking where she would love to play the red three from. Now she would love to not have that five in the eight ball there, then she would just be able to stun draw her cue ball off of the right long cushion and come towards the blue two. I mean, would you be tempted to... Okay, she's gonna follow it out of there, I think. It's tough, because she has to hit the one ball hard, full to make it. All right, the blue passes the three. Wrong angle though, so... Has to screw, stun her cue ball in the direction where her hand is now, and into the left rail and back out requires speed which then requires even more accuracy and kind of puts your technique under the loop or under a magnifying glass I think under the loop is more Dutch which I am originally right so speedy shot required here which scrutinizes your technique let's see how she does Nice, good shot, very good shot. Not the ultimate angle, but she can naturally kind of roll it with left spin, and that should bring her two rails towards the pink four. Right, so she's just waiting for a player on the left the table to the left of our table that we can't see. So, a chance for Christina to make it 5-3 and she really would love to take this opportunity and kind of regain well, at this moment a, a two game lead and make, make her be only one game away from victory and so she'll be able to roll it only with left spin so no hitting required a little bit straight but should be all right as you can see we're bowing down a little bit just to see exactly if she has enough angle to work with top left coming nicely two rails out of the corner I've really enjoyed how the two ladies have been hitting the cue ball like a good smooth hit um, no poking, nice strokes. Um, under pressure, having good cue action and, and good deliberation, not too slow. Yeah, I've been, been pleasantly impressed. Not that I didn't expect it, but it's just nice to see anybody play good, whether it's a junior, lady, or a man. Yeah, I just really like the way she addresses the cue ball, kind of like with small feathers, kind of gearing up, almost like a golf player, like just gearing up the speed she wants to play the shot at. And then following through with a nicely accelerating cue, meaning she kind of swings the cue back in her last swing fairly slow and then accelerates going through the white ball. She will do that here again, just that nice stun pop. So whether it's smaller shots like this or shots where you require more speed on the cue ball where you'd hit it a little bit harder but she kind of has the same rhythm to her stroke and I, I like that. It does look like a lefty's stroke though. Which is a very good thing. Good shot, good pop on the nine. This 10 ball to take a 5-3 lead and being only one game away from a quarter final place. Nice. 
good good out there all right quickly racking the balls Christina to break so should go hill hill then Christina gets the last break trying to make the red three or the black eight in the sides look at them black eight Ooh. Almost was kicked away, but still got made into the side. Shot on the one, albeit a thin cut shot. That would lead her cue ball to naturally go into the top rail and hit the blue too. I don't think there's avoiding that. Uh, yeah, I think you almost have to take that and maybe not knowing 100% what's going to happen after you collide with the blue two and just put all your focus in the pot and the kind of speed you think will bring you the best results or may bring you the best results or even leave you with a safety on the playable safety on the blue two making the two will or making the one ball here will give you a shot at something so focus on the one and a soft speed Ooh, played it safe. Now, that's a good shot. Um, didn't fully snooker her, but it requires a very thin cut on the left side of the one as we're looking to kind of leave the one ball there and take the cue ball back down to maybe where it is now. And that would be a hell of an achievement. I think that's the only shot that's there. Any other bank would... Wow, that's a beautiful thin cut. Now, that's an extremely hard shot to execute. <laughs> Hats off to Elul for that at this moment of the match as well. But I would have to say that to Christina, I wouldn't even give Elul that chance at the table. I would, would have rather seen her play the one ball make the one ball and do something with the two um, maybe run out because if you let a player back at the table you never know what's going to happen no matter how good the snooker is or good kick shot there couldn't have avoid that one ball hitting the brown seven or else the one would have been out of there and create distance as things stand Ailo about a minute and a half ago was faced with an incredible thin safety shot full table length executed that snookered Christina even though Christina made a good hit this is what can happen again I would coach Christina to say should have made that one ball when you had a chance to maybe never let a little back to the table all right here we are though good shot no clusters on the table and leave herself straight in on the red three to follow through for the pink four still needs a good shot and a good angle from orange five to green six but played could feel on the on the white ball would love to leave herself where the cue ball is now as a position on the orange five so about what is that 25 30 degree angle so the pot is very doable but you can also maneuver your cue ball at least to the other side of the table to the right side of the table to leave yourself straight in on the green six so just now that she's in line not rushing things and just seeing exactly where she would like to be shows good professionalism and 
will to play to play the game well all right so bottom left on the cue ball the cue ball to the right long rail Fairly good speed, you would say great speed, but it's she left herself so straight that she kind of is forced to leave the cue ball there. Would mean that she has to bridge off of the rail to make the seven. She would love to, a little bit of an angle so she could possibly potentially get her cue ball closer to the round seven. All right, it is what it is. So I think a perfect stop shot here, replacing the green with the white will do the trick. Never mind me, she screwed it back to absolute perfection. Well, I believe so. I think she left herself a playable angle. I think even if you are dead straight on this shot, there's always an angle you can create by making the brown seven in the left side pocket, or in the left side of the side pocket, or the right side of the side pocket. So theoretically, you would love to play position on the right side of the table to get to the yellow nine since there's a little bit more space could still choose to go to the left so let's see what she does here beautiful speed coming just off the rail leaving herself again that 30 degree angle meaning a very doable pot and a maneuverable cue ball if your next ball is not right next to the ball you're shooting. I think she will, well you can play it both ways with a little bit of left or a little bit of right to come either side of the side pocket really, to leave yourself a straight in 10, as close as you can to straight in. Now she missed one of these earlier, so will remind herself hopefully to at least stand still stroke at a nice speed don't poke it nice right Miss Kibaolu brings it back to a four games to five deficit will be breaking though she came back from a probable timeout that she took good moment to take a timeout let Christina think about her ways what she did in the previous rack although it wasn't much wrong was it high quality match here on the billiard network let's see what this break brings so, yeah that same ball has been crawling to the right side pocket and now although she didn't see the cue ball was still spinning until about two seconds ago so she didn't hasn't been hit hitting the cue ball nicely into the rack and it's often kind of had this cluster of balls to the right of the where the balls are racked but hey, lovely shot on the one. I think the blue two theoretically goes into the side pocket. Don't know if the, I think the red three goes in between the green six and blue 10 ball into the bottom right corner pocket. If that's the case, then she's got an open rack bar, the orange five that needs special attention or special specific position. So she could always opt to bring the cue ball to the right long rail north of the side pocket and leave herself a straight in two ball in the bottom corner, which I think she has done. I love it. A little bit of an angle, so it's workable either side or straightforward. I think if she were to follow this ball with a high ball, she could run it into the 10 ball where she's pointing now or that at that height and be able to shoot the three into the left side pocket how exciting this match is will she give us a final rack decider or will Christina still walk away a 6-4 winner Elu has been trailing this match, but it's never, she's only made one mistake as that missed 10 ball. It's a high quality match. 
from both players. So I would say they're both feeling good about their games. I've, I've played many good shots, and so if they're faced with potential difficult shots or crunch time moments, uh, I would favor them to to do well, really. So this is one of those moments. Position on the three, one of the two critical shots in this rack. Hit it too light. And of course, she didn't want to over hit it and snook herself behind the 10 ball. Still, cuttable three ball into the left side pocket. The cue ball will then definitely hit the, the left side of the left top side of the orange five ball. And then you never really know exactly where it's all gonna go. Or is she gonna play the th or is she gonna play safe? It looks like she's hitting the three full. Wow, the ladies are showing some patience and, and poise, really. It's like not that I would never play safe. And not that they shouldn't. But I thought she was maybe if the pot's there, you know, you always think attack first, but in a few situations they both showed patience and think they can get a better chance than the one they're facing with and so playing safe now this kick shot hit it first of all oh i think she called it in there well good hit good speed to after the hit on the three ball create be able to create distance of course this wasn't all by perfect design but she hit it well at the right speed So, and then you could ask yourself, will Eilil get a better shot on that thin cut on the three ball on the side? Will she ever get a better shot? I'm asking. Because this is, a, even though she played great safety, I mean, she did leave Christina a one rail kick at a not too steep angle. So it was, she was favored to hit that red three ball. And then, you know, there's no promise of you getting a pot afterwards. So I'm just saying that leaving an opponent to come back to the table can sometimes spell trouble, even if you play good safety, even if you've played a safety where the opponent has to jump a ball or, you know, you, you may never even get a shot back at the table or are faced with this unclear safety like this. What's she going to do here? safe looks good all right won't be a full ball snooker so she could hit the three she could even pot the three i think she's looking at the kick off of the bottom rail but there's really speaking from experience and if you can sketch how you're going to hit the three ball coming off of the bottom rail she wants to hit it half ball or thinner either side to create distance and possibly use the the orange black 10 green as a snookering ball but that's not easy she might make it all right chose to kick oh made the yellow nine ball so and that was of course not called for so Ariel does theoretically have the option to put Christina back in. It's not a foul shot if you make a ball you didn't call, but it is definitely loss of turn. But of course, Ariel is never going to give her <laughs> this three ball back, even though she's bridging partly over the blue 10. Position not natural, though. She, can't, she rolls it in. She will have an off angle shot on the orange into the side. She want to play the orange in the same pocket as the red three. Needs more speed. And that's a pretty good result, even though it's slightly off angle. And that ten ball is in the way if you want to top spin your cue ball. And if she wants to leave it where the orange is now, then for position on the green six, then it's the wrong angle on the green six. So. Playing it with top left, kind of wanting to avoid or just hit blue 10 ball. Ooh, tickle. Good shot, good shot. Whether it's straight or whether she's got an angle, she will be able to leave herself no more than a 50 degree angle pot. 
on this Brown 7, which should be doable to guide it along the rail. First things first, thump that green 6 into the top left. And she's looking to make this into a final rack decider. such that she should be able to roll the brown in and doesn't have to cross back and forth over the table. So, but that means that she's kind of forced to roll the, because you don't want to thump this in to cross the cue ball into the left long rail, right long rail and back out. That would require a lot of speed. I think she's looking to slow roll it. That's always a little bit of a touchy-feely shot, especially in moments like this. Potentially the last game or the penultimate game of this last 16 clash at the European 10-Ball Championships 2022. Miss Kibaolu trying to make it 5-5. Wow, she is crossing it. Beautiful. Left herself straight in on the black, but should be able to fashion some kind of angle. Even if she has to hit the top left rail and the top short rail first and make the black. She could screw it out with a lot of bottom left. Screw it back to the rail. Back to the long left rail and come out. I mean. Yeah. You would love to not be faced with a shot that requires this much precision, timing, spin accuracy. But, you know, if this is where you are, then you can do the best with what you either are given or give yourself. Let's see what she does. Wants to bring the cue ball close to that 10 ball. Zip. Good tempo, had a little bit of left spin there. As you could see, the cue ball coming towards the 10 all right testy 10 ball Whew. nice all right so glad you're joining us here on the billiard network in this one of the many matches we have with a last rack decider Christina to break the balls she's been breaking better than Ailil Looking to make the orange five or the black eight in the respective side pockets. There we go. Made neither. No balls down. One of the only or a few times she hasn't made a ball on the break. And what do you know? Only in the final rack decider does that happen, eh? Right. So Halo must be delighted. Having been 4 1 down, potentially could have faced been faced with a 5-1 deficit now one rack for the win hmm well naturally making the one cue ball comes off of that top short rail towards the 10 ball might drift to the right of it and that would give her a shot on the blue too which is what she needs because she would love you would love to not play this with a tip of right spin and slow roll it a little bit of head movement on that shot missed it didn't give a direct pot away so i think we're going to see a safety here what do you think cue ball behind the black ball Cue ball behind the pink. Cue ball hitting the right or left side of the one as she's looking at it. Bringing the cue ball back down behind the yellow nine. That requires a bit more travel. First option she took didn't snook her and even if she did she would have left the jump shot 
All right, this one ball goes into the pocket nearest to us, bottom left. Cue ball would then travel towards the 10 ball again, which is hard to say if it doesn't stop full where the 10 ball is, where else it would go. She could. It's making me a little bit nervy here. A, about the decision she's going to make and what's going to happen if and when she makes this one ball. I think it's makeable. She could not try to go for it and hit it even thinner than the potting angle and floating it to the left long rail and the cue ball behind the green six, something like that. Don't think that's the right option though. So a one rack shootout at the OK Corral here in Lasko, Slovenia, the European 10 ball championships for a place among the elite eight lady players, 10 ball players in Europe. With a chance then to be able to get yourself into a medal position and that's uh, what all these players are trying to achieve the least of course gold is the best color but uh, bronze or silver is uh, also something you could write home about let's say and you would take something home with as in a medal so let's see what she decides to do and more importantly the execution factor Ooh. Yeah, still a little bit unsure. I think she can make it, right? But I think the position on the blue two is... has only got a small window in between that brown and green to play position on, even if it is at a further distance from it. Yeah. And that is a great execution. Meaning, she definitely snookered a full ball. But Christina, coming off of the short rail nearest to us, will definitely hit this one ball, of course. Then, uh, she may jump it. Hmm. I don't think the bank is on for the jump, so would you want to go for it? Or it would be a jump safety then? The only thing being if you kick it off of the rail, short south rail. It's hard to get a snooker. The only good result could be if you drive the yellow one towards the top short rail. Mm. But the one rail logical kick would you know, ensure you a hit and some kind of potential result. I'm still looking if she can jump it. I don't think she's looking at the extreme curve shot. Mm. Called it in the top left corner. No clusters in the rest of this rack. So it's kind of like a, you, know, you could say, or should say, whoever gets a shot at the one or two potentially will get a shot at winning this match. So trying to hit it. Well, she's called it in the top left, but any hit will do, and a good speed. Good speed, double kissed it. A nice cue ball that's st almost stuck to the top short rail. Doesn't leave anything easy. Now, I think she can, if she goes for the pot, she will avoid hitting the red three and will then go towards the blue two off of this short rail so she could she might even make it avoid all balls and come straight in on the two it's hard to see it depends a little bit where she in which part of the pocket she makes the the one ball right i'm really enjoying this match and especially now that we have a you know as, as much tension as we can possibly make happen in a final rack decider let's see what she does here stand still Ooh, soft 
pot. Yeah, see that cube would have gone towards the blue too. Right, so she really just made it, knowing she wasn't going to have any position on the blue two bar a position to play safe after. Well, that's pretty mature, again, patient and poised decision, really. Just, you know, making that difficult one ball, taking it on, knowing that you're not even going to run out for sure after that, even if you make it. So... She could hit it just to the right of full, so to send the two ball left past the brown ball. But it won't really be a deadly snooker, I th would venture to say. It is a snooker. Is it a jump? Is it a jump and is she able to make the blue two or can she not see the potting angle because the orange is slightly in the way? Can we have a cameraman in the field who's going to roll his camera just right behind the cue ball so we can all see exactly what Christina is looking at now? That would be great. Failing that. Oh, she's calling the bank on the two. Jump, bank into the top left corner. Careful though, if you hit it that way, your cue ball might go into the corner you're calling the blue two in. All right, lining up the line of direction. Now she missed an earlier jump shot at a fairly short distance. So a quick cue action to thump that cue ball into the slate and out of it. <gasps> well, she was definitely not going to hit the brown seven. And, you know, clear her obs first obstruction. She, I think she almost jumped it so hard that she jumped partly over the blue too. Right, so Miss Kibarolu with a ball in hand chance nine balls on the table the three does pass the ten ball into this bottom left corner pocket for the rest the four is nice in front of the pocket five is good six is automatic and then it will kind of be seven eight eight to nine challenge <clears throat> and not such a big challenge if you have the right angles so first things first Yeah, she. I think she's going to leave a bit of an angle on. A high angle on this red three ball. She can stun it out of the bottom right corner. She doesn't want to try to come straight in on the three. She would love to have an angle like where the green is now. But of course, you don't want to snooker yourself behind the green ball. And with a ball in the hand position, you know, it's lovely to have that have all options open to you taking a while though from her usual tempo in this rack of course it is a very important moment as long as you don't slow down and kind of start thinking more negative thoughts rather than creative solution positive thoughts because this is the wrong angle really of course that pink four is is near the pocket but she would love to be on the left half of the table to make it a fairly full ball pot on the pink four so she can easily control the cue ball towards the orange five so top spin i think wanting to avoid the yellow nine and the ten ball yeah see of course this is never where she wanted to be two balls ago when she had ball in hand nonetheless about a quarter ball pot on this four ball. Nice and soft though, slow rolling it. Well, of course get her a shot onto the orange five. And that should bring her back in line. So even though, you know, you would, you would hit yourself in the head for missing this, you know, we've all kind of missed these shots. Kind of slow rolling it, hoping maybe the table doesn't roll off. Nice, good speed, hit the four well. Yeah, I think the green passes the 10 ball, so she can stop her cue ball there for automatic position. I think that's what it will be. Oh, she's looking at screwing it back now. So 
bringing the cue ball back to where it is now for a shot on the green six. It all works, but of course I would say if the green passes the, the 10 ball, you know, if, if the ball you're making gives you position on the next ball, like this, like a connect the dots position, then you'd need a very good reason to forego on that position you're given for free to try to get something better. Nice execution, nice stun tempo draw she made there. Left herself a beautiful shot on the green six. Well, kind of wants to leave herself where the green is now. Maybe a little bit of a screw back to just lower the angle percentage a little bit. A little bit straighter than she would like to be. Because now you kind of, in order to get yourself straight in on the black eight ball to screw it straight back for the nine like that's where she would love to be but that needs quite a thump to be able to create thump that cue ball hitting the seven hitting the right long rail and coming back out which requires more potting accuracy Easily created the speed, and created too much speed. Hello, cue ball. Wow, Christina must have thought there for a brief moment. Am I getting another shot here? All right, as things stand, this cue ball is going far away from the position she would love to be in now. She would love to leave the cue ball where it is now, kind of for a shot or somewhere thereabouts for a shot on the yellow nine. So she first has to drive it into the top right corner with a lot of right spin and then bring it past the halfway mark of the table past the blue spot let's say if you envision a snooker table so good spin good speed required here while also still making the black eight most important shot of the match this for a little for a chance to get into the last eight of the european championships 10 ball this is the shot Wow, a lot of spin left there. Almost too much. Yeah, beautiful how she was able to create that spin off of the two rails. Because she didn't roll it hard at all, but created a lot of liveliness. So this tester, because when your cue ball's frozen, it's just that bit harder to see 100% certain if you're going to make the ball, as opposed to if your cue ball's out on the table and you can see all of the circum the whole roundness of the white ball all right so this the shot of the match for her now that's it a little cabolo and this 10 ball going down now winner over Christina Zlateva into the quarterfinals wiping her forehead well happy with that win Christina.